and that puts us up at about 40 million Americans over the course of 10 weeks. Million, and we can look and try to find little statistics here and there that make it seem a little bit better. Just had to think, wait a minute, 40 million people have lost their jobs in 10 weeks. Are 40 million people really unemployed? Hello and welcome to another economics video. I'm Jeremy Lakash. Today is July 17th, 2020. And it's been a while. It's been maybe three years since I've done a video, so I'm glad to be back. And today I want to talk about 40 million people being unemployed, or at least that's what the media is telling us. And I want to ask the question, are 40 million people really unemployed? And I think if we begin to dig into the data, we'll see uh, some different numbers that'll be interesting for us to examine. How did we get to this number, 40 million? Well, what's happened is the media has taken each week's initial jobless claims and added them up. So cumulatively from mid-March through the end of May, 40 million initial jobless claims were filed. And I think it's important for us to know what initial jobless claims are. They are people who filed for unemployment for the first time. So an initial jobless claim is somebody who was working last week and this week they're unemployed and they're filing for unemployment insurance. If the 40 million unemployed rate or, or number is correct, then that implies an unemployment rate of around 25%. But if we dig deeper into uh, the unemployment claims report, we would find a more realistic and more reasonable statistic, in my opinion. So there are two types of claims that occur, and they're reported in the same report weekly by the Department of Labor. The first is the initial jobless claims, which we discussed. But another number is the number of people who are filing for continuing claims, meaning they were unemployed last week and they're still unemployed this week. And it's also uh, been more recently, the name has been changed to adjusted insured unemployment. And that number, according to a report that was released yesterday for the week ending July 4th, is 17.34 million. That's a far cry from 40 million. So the Department of Labor, and if you look down here, you'll see the historical charts of each, the seasonally adjusted and the continuing claims. And the continuing claims, according to the Department of Labor, never exceeded 25 million. And in fact, they're declining. Uh, they're down almost 8 million from late May. So according to the Department of Labor, the number of truly unemployed people is on a slow but steady decline. So how can this happen? How can there be a, such a disparity between the two figures? Well, it's important to understand, and it's a huge key here, that a worker can file for unemployment, initial unemployment claims, multiple times over time. The only requirement is that they work and earn an income in between claims. And so what's going on right now with COVID-19 is that people are returning to work either temporarily or periodically, and they're getting laid off again and again, and they're filing new initial claims. So the same person who filed a claim on March 17th could go back to work, get laid off again in late April, go back to work again and get laid off in late May. So while they filed three initial claims, they only represent one unemployed person. And that one unemployed person has earned some income through this period of time. Great examples are construction workers, restaurant workers, hotel workers, and even healthcare workers. And they each have their own experiences in relation to our economy. Construction and healthcare right now are seeing disruptions, but they're coming from two different places. At the end of the day, initial jobless claims are still very useful. 
They tell us how many people were laid off in the last week, which is an important number and still communicates or, or we can put together a trend by analyzing previous week's claims. We just shouldn't add them together. Currently, this data can really help us trend the impact of what I call COVID 2.0 or the resurgence of the coronavirus and whether or not political leadership is going to renew restrictions on the economy. So if we see initial claims start to jump, then we're going to know that the coronavirus is now once again uh, inflicting additional damage to our labor force and our economy. So if you want an estimate of total number of unemployed, use the continuing claims data, or as they call it, the insured unemployment data. Don't add up numbers. Don't do calculations. It's all right there in the report. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.